supplemental math videos from Circle Christian School. All right, Rudy Tootie with the all-knowing eye. Here comes the eye. Really, not all that different. Ah, oh, what to do with all these eye guys? Well, sometimes we just have to play that way. So, taking a look at the first one here, we're going to take away the eight, and we're going to take away the eight. Been done before. Oh, uh, we got the squigglies going on again. Don't know why it does that. Seems to. So we get x squared equals the negative eight, and you go, wait, whoa, those are the ones that we thought were extraneous. Guess what? Now they're not anymore. So I'm going to square this side and plus minus square root the other side. And that's going to give us an x with a um, plus minus square root 8i, which we know is 2 square root 2i. See? Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Let's try another color just because colors are fun. Next one has a whole bunch of stuff going on, but remember step four, isolate the condition. And we see the program still has the little squigglies in it. Love it. I guess because it's morning, it just hasn't woke up yet. So minus 32 and minus 32. Going to solve them like we do all the other ones, and we end up with a 2. 3x minus the 5 and the little square thing going on. No problemo. And, of course, a negative 32. Uh, looking like one of those extraneous ones, but guess what? Not anymore. We have a solution. So, divide out the 2. Gives us the 3x minus the 5 squared. Equals a negative 16. Oh, looking vaguely half real. So now we're going to square root, rooty tooty, plus minus square root, the negative 16. Everybody comes out, and we get the 3x minus the 5. Notice how the squigglies kind of disappear when we go down the page here. It's kind of weird how it does that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to leave a little space space here because there's stuff going on. I'm going to go plus minus square root 16i, which we know is 4i. Now we said that there's a reason why we try to keep the real stuff first, the imaginary stuff second. 5 is going to jump the fence. There he goes. He's a positive 5. And of course now we have to divide out the 3 reason for having something real. In something imaginary at the front and then the back. All right, here's the different ones. These are equations of quadratic form. You'll notice it doesn't have a power of 2 going on, but something a little bit bigger than that power of 2, and we get a power of 4. So what we're going to do is change them into quadratic form because then we can go and play with them. So, u being the prime uh, variable here, I'm just going to go and say, hey, u equals x squared. This was an answer to Niels Abel's, Abel's problem of how do I deal with these strange ones that aren't, you know, power 2 or maybe up to a power 3. What do we do with other guys? Well, if I make x equals 2, I can rewrite this equation here as x squared to the power of 2 plus 5 plus 4 equals 0 which will allow me to insert the u where the x squares are at. And this now is going to give me u2 plus 5u plus 4. And now we got something quadratic. That allows us to be able to do that little double bubble thing as we move on along the way. Let me see, 4 and 1, yeah. 
So we would have u plus the 4 and u plus the 1. And see, I've got some roots going on. Uh, likewise, maybe we've got something weird like little square rooty guy. So I'm just going to let u equal the square root. All right, so we're just going to change this to being square root of x squared minus 5 square root x plus a 6 equals 0. And then we're going to insert the u's where all the little square roots are squared minus 5u plus a 6. And again, now we have something quadratic which allows us to have that cute little double bubble thing going on again. It's just with a U. So what do we have? Two and three. Sounds good to me. Uh, negative, negative. Awesome, cool. Notice what we're changing here is the middle guy. You look at him to figure out what has to change for the rest of the problem and let it equal you. So let's try one where We've got, of course, you know, a little bit of a high power program. I try closing that, bring it back. Uh, maybe somebody like Chris can fix it for me. Okay, so I'm going to let you equal the little x squared guys, which means I'm going to have x squared squared minus 13 x squared plus the 36 equals the zero. And if I replace everybody with a u, my little x squares with a u, I'm going to have a u squared equals, I'm sorry, minus 13u. Uh, there we go. So 13u plus the 36 equals the 0. And now I have a cute little doubly bubbly that I get out of this which allows me to be able to solve it. So u minus the 9 and u minus the 4. And I'm just going to go solve it. I'm going to get u equals 9 and u equals 4. OK, here's the gig, though. We have to go back and remember that u equals x squared. So now. So I get a x squared equals the 9, which means we're going to have to square root, square root. And so x is going to equal rooty tooty, positive minus 3. And likewise, we're going to do the same thing here. So, and we square root, plus minus, square root. So x here is going to equal a plus minus 2. And if you don't believe me, into uh, your graphing calculator, and you will find that what you have is something that goes, um, I'm going to guess it goes down at the negative 3 up at the negative 2, down at the positive 2, positive 3. Hmm, I better go take a check and see if it looks like that. You can double check me and let me know. All right, guys, have a wonderful complex day.